I'm over at the Honda Clarity section of the 2019 LA Auto Show. And um, one of the reasons why I bring you over here, I don't know if you can hear me over the speaker, um, is to show you one of the serious drawbacks of the dynamics of fuel cell technology. As you know, as I explained during the 2019 Orange County Auto Show, it's always been my contention that hydrogen fuel technology is not the car of the moment that regular electromobility is. And I explained what the differences are between a regular electric car and a hydrogen fuel cell car. It's, a, it's an electric car and it's all about the, the battery. It's not about the motor as opposed to what a gasoline vehicle is where uh, the fuel is supplied directly to the motor. It's about the battery and how the energy is applied to the battery, which gives it to the motor. And in this case, it's the frozen hydrogen fuel that is supplied to the battery that gives the electric motor or motors the, the energy. But this is the dynamic and the problem that you have with hydrogen technology. If you look here, all of these green spots in California is where there are hydrogen fuel cell stations. And this is why these vehicles have three, four, 500 miles of range. Yeah, on average, they have about three to 400 miles of range, like a long range BEV. And the reason why is because it needs that much range to get on long distance trips to get anywhere. And this is also within the California area. So you can imagine what this must be like in the uh, 11 state region where there are just um, the nearest public charging station is only 80 miles away. What that dynamic must be like for a hydrogen fuel cell station um, in that region. So this is one of the problems that they have with uh, hydrogen fuel uh, technology. I think another aspect of this that I, I didn't discuss in the last video about hydrogen fuel cell technology, I think what we're having here is that we're stuck with gas and go. We really do need to look at the electric car as being a separate, different invention. And having that gas and go habit, hydrogen fuel technology seems to be very, very compelling. But I think what will happen is as we go along in this process of electromobility and get used to charging our electric cars, that we'll get away from that gas and go dynamic and get ourselves so comfortable into electromobility that this probably will become um, neutralized in some way. But if hydrogen fuel cell technology does come about, as I said, it will be um, probably within 50 years from now, not in our lifetime, but this will be the next progression. So let's take a little look at the uh, Honda Clarity and see uh, what this vehicle is about. Its design cues may look similar to Honda Accord, but this is a separate vehicle built at a special fuel cell assembly plant in Japan for Honda. The Honda Clarity is an entirely different car than the Honda Accord. And in fact, it's about four inches shorter um, than Accord. The fuel cell variant has a 100 kilowatt uh, battery that uh, and motor that uh, yields about 189 pound feet of torque and 130 horsepower. Its range is about 240 miles. It has a 4.1 kilogram tank and um, it has a mileage and it's done in kilograms. It gets 77 miles per kilogram for city. It gets 67 miles kilogram per highway. And the, seven, the combined mileage is 72 kilograms, miles per kilogram combined. The all electric variant has a 25.5 um, kilowatt battery. It's a very tiny battery and it only gets about 89 miles of range. Um, the hybrid, has a combined electric gas of 340 miles uh, of range, and its all electric um, mode gives it uh, 47 miles of range. So this is the uh, Honda Clarity and uh, the three variants that it has. You are uh, available to get a, a federal uh, tax credit on this. If you're a California resident, you get $2,500 also in addition, and um, it's available for, um, for sale at Honda. This is not a full production vehicle. This would not be considered a full production 
vehicle. Um, this is an experiment. This is actually falls within the compliance parameters of what the manufacturers need to produce to stay in compliance with uh, federal regulations. So, as I mentioned, one of the frustrating things about Honda and Toyota is that these two brands are the perfect brands to introduce the mass market to electromobility with a mass production vehicle. But as of yet, they don't have that. And hopefully soon they will. And in fact, uh, Toyota is probably going to be stepping up their efforts to, uh, to start their production of an all electric vehicle. They labeled this particular car behind me a prototype. I have no doubt that's probably what it is, but it actually now will become a full production model next year. This is the 2021 Toyota Mirai, the fuel cell car. Now, if you remember back at the 2018 Orange County Auto Show, I showed you that flip up uh, model of the Mirai and explained hydrogen technology. Well, I wanted you to take a look at what the car looks like when it's actually down on the ground. And here it is. The car is already in production. This is probably a new generation. Next generation model is coming out next year. This is the Toyota Mirai. It seems Heinrich Fisker is continuing his journey towards electromobility as we take a look at all of his hybrid vehicles here at the 2019 LA Auto Show. Um, what you have here is a combination of vehicles that are already in production. You know this vehicle as the Fisker Karma. It is now known as the Karma Rivero. Um, what I will also show you in B-roll is a prototype vehicle that is a convertible um, that's called the Vision uh, that probably won't be in production, maybe a variant of that maybe sometime soon. What I would have liked to have seen here that we won't apparently at uh, this particular exhibit is the SUV that uh, Karma would like to uh, put into production. Um, it is supposedly a SUV that is mass market. It will be reasonably priced and um, they're looking to put it in in like one or two years. So um, that's not available here at the, um, at the auto show. But they do have a very compelling collection here of vehicles, uh, including the SC2. That's the hard top that you'll see in B-roll um, that uh, has kind of like gold wing doors. So this is the Karma collection. Um, at the LA Auto Show. You know, we really haven't talked about the Jaguar I-Pace or Jaguar products so lately. There's been a lot of things that have been going on the past several months with Jaguar Land Rover. They put themselves in serious trouble by putting themselves all out there in the Chinese market with only one electric vehicle and a plethora of hybrids and diesels and the Chinese were not going to have it. Even they know that there's build quality issues with Jaguar, the proverbial leaky, oily Jaguars that we're all familiar with over the decades. Um, it has now come home to roost for the brand and Tata Motors seems to have a difficult time determining what to do with it. I knew, know one thing for certain that trying to get a partner to go half say in how to get out of that debt is not going to be a viable solution for them. So the brand is in serious trouble. As you already know, I've already spoken about how there are too many brands in the auto industry. This was always a problem with Petro Mobility. Both Wall Street and auto industry experts agree with this, that there's too many brands. And with Electromobility, there will be an even need for less of them. Um, now that they have been reduced to being garage appliances that electric cars really are in many ways. They're not standalone motor vehicles that we once considered them to be over the decades since their invention. Um, what is unique and different about the brand is that next year Jaguar will be introducing its all electric XJ saloon and they will be using a new design uh, schematic architecture for that new vehicle. It will have an all new look like the Jaguars did 10 years ago when they were rebooted and reintroduced. There will be only one variant that will be uh, available in that format. It will be all electric. It will be in saloon format and the XJ will join the I-Pace. Um, so let's take a look at the I-Pace. These doors are open. One of the nice things you see are the 
the stick out handles uh, tip that makes this so unique. Uh, I want to take you inside and have you take a closer look at, at the Jaguar I Pace. So let's let's do that. And so that wraps up my coverage of the 2019 LA Auto Show. I hope you enjoyed it. It gives you hopefully an idea of where things are going with electromobility. There are a couple of people that I would like to thank. I'd like to thank my producers, Eric Raven and Nick Peñalosa, and also Carl Stedman, the CEO of the station for producing my show. Uh, you're doing a bang up job and I appreciate everything that they do so far for bringing my uh, show to podcast. So until next time, I'm Al Castro. We will be back with another topic hopefully soon. And I ask you to stick with me on Sergeant Al's Traffic Ticket Blog.